What is the difference between the extraordinary form, traditional Latin mass as it's referred to, and the novus order or the new order of the mass? As many people are aware, Pope Francis recently implemented some new restrictions on celebrating the traditional Latin mass, the Tridentine form of the mass. And I recently did a video on this very thing and it came to light in the comments from people that just how much misinformation is out there regarding the differences between traditional Latin mass and the Novus Ordo, the new order of the mass. Through reading the comments of that video, it came to light just some of the outrageous claims that are being brought up from mostly the extraordinary form community as to the historical roots and the differences between these two forms of the mass. Why does there seem to be so much tension between these two communities and do some of the claims from the traditional Latin mass community hold up against historical scrutiny? Welcome to All That Catholic Stuff, I'm Chris Bray. There is a growing movement of people who appreciate the traditional Latin mass and the Tridentine form, or also known as the extraordinary form. People who are fed up with liturgical abuses, with priests taking liberties in the mass and abusing the rubric, and longing for a mass that presents it in the highest form of reverence possible. And here's the thing, this is something that I desire as well. I'm tired of priests that feel like they can deviate from the rubric and take liberties with the liturgy. I am frustrated with leadership that though they may have good intentions to make the mass more appealing, in doing so are diminishing the sacredness of the holy mass. I get it. But there is, however, a divide between these two communities where people proclaim preference as dogma. There are definitely caricatures on both sides of these communities. Like, for example, the traditional Latin mass community often communicates their disdain for the supposed mass of the hippie, tie-dyed, kumbaya singing mass. While the Novus Order or New Order of the Mass community often share their distaste for the elitism mentality, overly pious, self-righteous mentality that they get from the traditional Latin Mass community, often feeling like they are somehow less holy or reverent for choosing to celebrate in this particular form of the Mass rather than the Tridentine form. Personally, I'm put off by both extremes. I'm not going to deal with caricatures in this video. I'm going to deal with fact and history. If you don't believe me that these extremes exist, all you need to do is read the comments of my video regarding Pope Francis's restriction of the traditional Latin Mass, and you'll see that these extremes are very much present in our era today. So let's sift through the emotion, the drama, the confusion, and let's see if some of these claims from the traditional Latin Mass community hold up as historical truth. For those of you who may not even understand why this is a source of tension, let me give you a very brief synopsis. The extraordinary form of the Mass, or the Tridentine form, the traditional Latin Mass was introduced or codified in the Council of Trent by Pope Pius V in 1570. The, the majority of the Mass was already present and in use. It had numerous forms in existence at the time. Pope Pius V desired one uniform Mass. Pope Pius actually introduced a restriction through the Council of Trent to restrict the numerous forms of the Mass, kind of similar to what Pope Francis has just reaffirmed. So from 1570, the Tridentine form of the Mass, the traditional Latin Mass, was in use for 400 years. And it should be noted that some revisions to the Tridentine form of the Mass were also made, such as in 1955 during Holy Week, among other revisions across history. Now at the Second Vatican Council in the 1960s, the Mass was revisited and revised once again. The form of the Mass that came out of the Second Vatican Council was the Novus Ordo, or the New Order of the Mass. The form of this Mass was mildly revised, introducing things like being able to celebrate in the vernacular the local language of the people, and also the consolidation of some of the more redundant prayers. The Novus Ordo, or the New Order of the Mass, was considered the ordinary form. After the Second Vatican Council, they decided that this was to be the norm that was to be celebrated. And the traditional Latin Mass in the Tridentine form was the extraordinary form of the Mass, meaning the exception. If you go back and read Missale Romanum from 1969, you can clearly see that the goal of the Second Vatican Council in reforming the Mass in the Novus Order was to remove the redundant prayers and the prayers that had accumulated over the centuries, no matter how pious they might be, to make it accessible to the people, to foster that active participation and to restore the Mass 
to its historic roots. From that document, it goes on to say this. After the Council of Trent, the study of ancient manuscripts of the Vatican Library and others gathered elsewhere, as our predecessor, St. Pius V, indicates in the Apostolic Constitution Quo Primum, has greatly helped for the revision of the Roman Missal. Since then, however, more ancient liturgical sources have been discovered and published, and at the same time, liturgical formulas of the Oriental Church have become better known. Many wish that the riches, both doctrinal and spiritual, might not be hidden in the darkness of libraries, but on the contrary, might be brought into the light to illumine and nourish the spirits and souls of Christians. Essentially, what this document from the Second Vatican Council is saying is that though the Council of Trent and Pope Pius V did their best with what they had available to them, there have been more historical documents brought to light, more resources available for us to see what the early liturgies looked like. The Novus Order Mass was designed and the goal of it was to return to the ancient liturgy of the early centuries. Oh, some advocates for the traditional Latin Mass community are suggesting that the Novus Ordo form of the Mass is vastly different from the traditional Latin Mass, the Tridentine form. I had wondered this myself, and so what I did was I printed both forms of the Mass in their text, and I highlighted the sections of the Mass that are different, that vary. They are extremely similar. People are gonna notice three main differences right off the bat. The first, is language. In the traditional Latin Mass, obviously, it is spoken and prayed in Latin, whereas the Novus Order Mass permits the Mass to be celebrated in the vernacular, meaning the local language of the people. But it also doesn't limit the Mass from being prayed and celebrated in Latin as well. The second thing that people are going to notice is different is ad orientum, where this practice of the priest facing east. And it's a long-standing Christian tradition that we believe as Christians that Christ will return coming from the east. And so Christians would often pray facing towards east. Now, in the context of the liturgy, liturgical east is the tabernacle or the altar where consecration is taking place. And so we see the people along with the priest facing the direction of east. And that is a beautiful tradition that I love. But here's the thing, the general instruction of the Roman Missal permits this still. It actually, in fact, instructs when the priest is to face the people. And if that's the case, that would mean that ad orientum is still permitted in the Novus Order, the new form of the Mass as well. The third difference that people are probably going to notice is the text of the Mass. There are some variations between these two forms of the Mass. At the time of the Council of Trent in 1570, when the Tridentine form of the Mass, the traditional Latin Mass, was codified, in medieval times there had been a lot of prayers that had been added on to the Mass. But the new form of the Mass consolidated and reduced these redundant prayers. For example, the reading of Psalm 42 at the beginning, or some of the offertory prayers that take place, and the gospel reading at the end of the Mass. Some of these elements have been removed or significantly consolidated. Now, there are some claims from the Extraordinary Form community that need some addressing. The first claim is that the Tridentine form of the traditional Latin Mass goes all the way back to the second century, or a thousand years, or 1300 years, or 1500 years, or some other duration. Now, in a sense, it does. However, if you were to claim that the text from the Tridentine form of the Mass that was codified in 1570 goes all the way back to the early centuries, then you would also need to suggest that the text that came from the Norvis Odo form of the Mass from the Second Vatican Council also existed in the early centuries as well. Because in a sense, it does. All of the main elements are present. Some make the argument that, well, la the Latin Mass goes back to the early centuries. And if you mean that the Mass was celebrated in Latin, then absolutely. But the language in which the Mass is celebrated is vastly different from the form of the Mass. Just because the Tridentine form of the Mass is Latin does not mean that the same exact text that was used in 1570 was also used in the second century. This is an oversimplification of history and a flat-out fallacy. The Tridentine form of the Mass that was codified in 1570, the Council of Trent, is not found in the second century. And it's even different from Pope Gregory the Great in the 6th and 7th century. Like, elements of the Mass were still being moved around, like for example, the sign of peace and where certain elements took place, and also the accumulation of many pious prayers in the medieval era contributed to these numerous forms of Masses, which is why 
Pope Pius V at the Council of Trent restricted the forms of the Mass to the Tridentine form and any other form that could demonstrate its historic roots past 200 years. Yes, much of the Tridentine form of the Mass was already present at the time it was codified in 1570. But so is much of the Novus Ordo, the new order of the Mass that was, came out of the Second Vatican Council. All you need to do to prove this is ask somebody who claims that the Mass goes back to the second century or whatever century of choice, is ask them to provide the text from their century of choice and compare it to the mass text from 1570 in the Council of Trent. If they're not identical, then they are gonna be unable to prove that claim as true. In its 18th session of the Council of Trent, the Council appointed a commission to examine the Missal, to revise it, and to restore it according to the custom and right of the Holy Fathers. See, this is what the Council of Trent aimed to do, to revise it and to restore it to its historic roots. That was the aim of the Council of Trent. Now, interestingly enough, I'd like to read an excerpt from Cranmer's Godly Order Liturgical Revolution by Michael Davis. It says this, The Missal of 1570 was, much else, a replica of the Roman Missal of 1474, which in turn repeated in all essentials the practice of the Roman Church and the Apostle of Innocent III, which itself derived from the usage of Gregory the Great and his successors in the 7th century. In short, the Missal of 1570 was, in essentials, the usage of the mainstream of medieval European liturgy. So yeah, I would absolutely agree that the Tridentine form of the traditional Latin Mass, which was codified in 1570, the Council of Trent, was very similar to what was celebrated prior and leading up to that time, as it should be. Like, if we have a departure from the Mass that is so significant, that should be a cause of worry for us. But what historians also admit is the exorbitant amount of pious prayers that had developed and accumulated in the Mass in the medieval era leading up to the Tridentine Mass's codification in 1570. Codification. I think I maybe just made a word there. And look, let's look at this reasonably, right? If the texts prior to the Tridentine form of the Mass being codified in 1570 don't match identically, then why are we worried if there are some variations from the Second Vatican Council in the Novus Ordo form of the Mass as well? After all, the goal of the Second Vatican Council in the Novus Ordo form of the Mass was to restore the Mass to his historical roots, which includes the earlier centuries predating Pope Gregory the Great in the seventh century. Another claim from the traditional Latin Mass community is that the Novus Ordo form of the Mass in the Second Vatican Council removed 80% of the liturgical text. I don't know where people get their numbers from or how they're basing this. I've heard 17%, 20%, 30%. All we need to do is compare the text of the Mass. And this is what I did. On one side of the page, I printed out the text for the extraordinary form. And on the other side of the page, I printed out the text for the Novus Ordo form of the Mass from the Second Vatican Council. And I compared the two. They are extremely similar, as they should be. Yes, there are sections in the Tridentine form of the traditional Latin Mass that had been removed. Like, for example, the praying Psalm 42 at the beginning or the Gospel at the end of the Mass. And some of the offertory prayers had been consolidated. But to say that it is a unique Mass, a brand new Mass, or some kind of fabrication, something that was an invention, is not truthful. All you need to do is to compare the text side by side. And you can see that the essence and the substance of the prayers has been maintained in the Novus Ordo, the new form of the Mass. Both forms of the Mass are obviously carrying on the tradition that was handed to us. Now, another wild claim is people suggesting that the Novus Ordo form of the Mass is invalid or illicit. Look, this is going to be something that is going to need to take its own video to unravel all the depths of. But... Simply put, I hear two main arguments for this. One, that the sacrificial nature of the Mass has been removed from the Novus Ordo form of the Mass. And two, that we diminish the sinfulness of the faithful in our need for God's mercy. Well, a quick overview. Just simply reading through the text of the Mass, we can see that the word sacrifice is used seven times over the course of the Mass. And we see that we ask for God's mercy and forgiveness at least four or five times before we ever receive communion, acknowledging ourselves as sinners and asking God's grace and forgiveness. I don't see how these claims hold up. 
much more can be said, but as somebody who is trying to pursue truth, it is very frustrating to see fallacies being spread as dogma. I wish people would evaluate these claims with our historical roots first, before spreading these fallacies around. And I think this is why the church is calling for unity. It's for this reason right here. I want reverent masses. I want liturgical abuses to stop. I think Latin being chanted during the mass is beautiful and fitting and timeless. I think ad orientum, like the idea, the concept of facing liturgical east is a beautiful and fitting practice in the liturgy. I think receiving communion on the tongue is a very reverent posture. And there is no reason why any of these cannot happen in the Novus Ordo form of the Mass. But many from the extraordinary form traditional Latin Mass community would have you believe that the Novus Ordo form of the Mass is a fabrication and an invention. Now, can we please, please, please have some historical perspective on the Mass? Read the Dedicate from the first century, and we can see the very simple instructions it gives the early Christians on how to celebrate the Mass. Read Justin Martyr's account and testimony of how the, the Mass was celebrated in the second century. And this is largely the structure that we still use today in the church. Now, it can be suggested, and I believe that the Second Vatican Council claims that the Novus Ordo form of the Mass is attempting to be closer in form to the early centuries of Christianity. Like the aim of the Second Vatican Council was to restore the Mass to its historic roots. I think the traditional Latin Mass is a beautiful expression, a beautiful form of liturgy, but to suggest that it is the only pure form, is the only valid Mass, would be suggesting that when St. Paul celebrated Mass, we have an account of in the scriptures, would be somehow insufficient. This mentality analogously reminds me of the advocates for the King James only translation of the Bible, which came in the 16th century, 1500 years after the scriptures had finished being written. The fact of the matter is, the mass has developed and been revised across the ages of the history. Even the Tridentine form of the mass had been revised after the Council of Trent in 1570. Revisions have happened across history, but the mass remains fundamentally the same, the same elements. Yeah, some of them have been moved around a little bit. Some of the phrasing has been changed. Some of the practices and the disciplines have evolved over the ages, but the mass is still fundamentally the same, whether in the Novus Ordo, the new form of the mass coming out of the Second Vatican Council, or the Tridentine form of the mass, or the mass of Pope Gregory the Great, or the mass of the early centuries of Christianity celebrated in Greek and then Latin, or the mass that Christ himself gave to us as he spoke Aramaic in the upper room. The mass is the mass. And yes, sadly, abuses happen, but instead of blaming it on the form of the Mass. Let's hold the leadership and the faithful accountable. Let's strive to restore reverence and beauty to the Mass no matter what form is being celebrated. There are valid considerations on both sides of this issue. Personally, I see valid points on both sides. I have preferences on both sides of this discussion. But let's pursue truth, not fallacy. Let's continue to live in obedience to the Church which Christ had entrusted to lead us and guide us. And let's do this with love, humility, and virtue. Otherwise, whether we appreciate celebrating in the traditional Latin Mass or in the Novus Ordo, the new form of the Mass, it's all for nothing. If the form of the Mass that you are attending is causing you to have bitterness towards those who choose not to celebrate in that form of the Mass, or is filling your heart with malice, and anger and resentment, then perhaps it's not the form of the Mass that is the problem. The Mass is meant to pour into our hearts the sacramental grace to produce real transformation and change within us. And if that's not happening, then perhaps we need to allow those sacramental graces to produce evidence of what St. Paul describes in the scriptures as the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which is love, patience, generosity, peace, humility, obedience. If that's not happening, then perhaps the problem isn't the form of the Mass. Perhaps it's our disposition to it. Let's continue to pray for all those who might be struggling with the decision from Pope Francis to restrict the traditional Latin Mass. And let's continue to strive to seek Jesus in the Mass. What a gift that we have. Let's keep our eyes focused on Jesus.